Hallelujah. Today we are reading from Judges chapter 14. We have Pastor Joshua sharing. So yesterday, chapter 13, we talked about the wonderful salvation of God and the birth of Samson. God prepared Samson. Before he was uh, in his mother's womb, his mother was not to drink any fermented drink. Do not be worldly. We will not be defiled by the world, but completely set apart for the Lord. So then uh, his mother conceived with him and bore him. And then God told him that Samson will be a Nazarite to God from the womb. He will keep he would keep the covenant of Nazareth and live a set apart, sanctified life. Do not be defiled by the world. Be, belong to God totally all his life. No razor shall come upon his head all his life. Not to drink wine or similar drink, any fermented drink. Others, people drink what the world is drinking. Samson was not to drink. But in the Middle East, they always drink the fermented drink or grape, uh, this uh, alcohol or wine. So Samson was not to drink any of this. His mother didn't drink when he, he, she bore him. And he was brought up as a Nazarite. so that he can be completely set apart for the law to be used by God. God prepare him to save, deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. That's what chapter 13 was telling us. And at the end, and then at the end, Samson grew up. That's um, verse 24 of chapter 13. And God blessed him. Verse 24, as he was growing up, God was blessing him continuously. Then he was in Manaha, down between Sora and Estol. And the Spirit of the Lord became to move, began to move upon him. That's verse 25 of chapter 13. So he, was, he grew up in blessing. He had the Spirit of God on him. Before he was born, God had prepared. Uh, he is a child that before he was born, God had prepared him. God had a plan in his life in order to use him to deliver the Israelites from the hand of the Philistines. He was the much expected, anticipated, Painted, uh, and uh, the judges greatly, and he was uh, anticipated, expected of God to be used by God to deliver, to be a judge. God really humbled himself very much, as we said yesterday, and came to this dark world. Passed this message to Samson's parents. So uh, God wanted to tell uh, Manoah, but then Manoah didn't really know God. But God insists that he will choose Samson. And then he ascended in, the in the flame, in the fire. God showed himself as wonderful. Wonderfully, God sent, grants Manoah and his wife, Samson in order to deliver the Israelites from the hand of the Philistines. That was the heart of God. The will of God is to deliver Israel. And he came to this dark world. In the time of Judges, man didn't know God, didn't want to know him. Even when he stood before Manoah and his wife, they didn't recognize him as the angel of the Lord. Manoah was even rude, impolite to God. 
But the will of God to save the Israelite, to save mankind, never changes. Because God had covenant with Abraham, with Moses. He gave himself to mankind. He gave himself to us, to Israel. Even when the Israelites were worshipping other foreign gods, yet God still delivered them. And he, but then we could see that the churches, one after the other, they are, they were getting worse. So in the <laughs> in Chinese, we have that the crab is getting small that you get from the market. So it's just you, the the quality is getting lower and lower. Basically, that's the meaning. Samson himself, his birth. Well, you can see uh, the birth of the uh, Samson was most arranged to the details. Even though the time was dark, so dark, so gloomy, but the birth of Som Samson was completely set apart, sanctified, not defiled by the world. That's how he grew up as well. His growing up is was so different. A very excellent, extraordinary preparation. The spirit of the Lord moved mightily upon him, and God blessed him abundantly. So we look forward to the Samson to grow up, and you know, wow, glorious start. So his life should be all going up. His ministry should be going up all the time. That's our expectation, right? And that Israelites will be delivered from the hand of the Philistines, and even at the time the Philistines uh, were, were oppressing, oppressing the Israelites. The Dan, the tribe of Dan, did not receive their inheritance yet. He only received a little bit of what God has given him, promised. Neighboring to uh, Judah and um, Benjamin, he received a tiny bit of God's promised inheritance. He didn't possess the land yet; they did not. He did not receive what uh, Joshua had allotted to them through drawing lots. The land was occupied by the Philistines; they could not possess the land at the time. The Dinite. Now this time. God really spent much effort and energy on the life of Samson. God had high expectation on Samson, not only to deliver Israel from the hand of Philistines. If if <laughs> Samson had been like really a good boy, lived up to the expectation, he could possess the land for the tribe of Dan. He was, he was, he was the judges with most of God's spirit and most powerful among all judges mentioned. He was most powerful, mighty. He was so, um, you know, his 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 martial arts could be uh, better than. You know, his strength could pull, can move mountains. Can uh, his spirit would be able to like cover all the world? But the name of Samson was Samson was not really good. Oh, there is a Chinese king who was supposed to be very powerful as well. But this king had a, like a. Like a concubine who was faithful to him, but Samson did not have such a woman. What was Samson pursuing? We must think about it. What was Samson pursuing? As we read on the coming three chapters, we shall know. 
God has prepared a lot, made a lot of preparation, and the Spirit of God moved upon him. That that God blessed him. All oh, this preparation, God had high expectation on him. His parents had high expectation on him. The Israelites had high expectation on Samson. Oh yes, the tribe of Dan. We had a judge rising up. That's Samson. His parents met God, saw God face to face. He was given to God by God. His parents were barren, childless, but now, wow! It's a miracle that his parents got this child. God appeared to them. Wow! Extraordinary thing. And God, uh, you know, ascended to heaven in flame when he uh, brought sacrifices. Yes, there is hope for Israel. Yes, Dan will be able to possess their land. But what did Samson live for? What did he live for? The title for today, uh, this week, we'll read up to chapter sixteen. That's the whole life cover the whole life of Samson. Now the title for chapter fourteen, I give it. It's really hard. The title is hard. Samson was such a selfish person. He did not live for God. He lived for himself alone. Chapter fourteen to chapter sixteen in Judges. There was a pattern. There was a rhythm keeps、uh, recurring. Keep recurring. There is. There was a rhythm. Go up and come down. Basically, there's one word: going down, go down, descend, go up, go go down, go. Just one word: go. Verse one. Now Samson went down to Timna. Verse one. Went down to Timna. So Samson was birth and grew up in chapter thirteen. Now he started his ministry. The spirit of God moved upon him. He started to minister, just like the spirit of God moved mightily in the Lord Jesus. Then Lord Jesus began his ministry on earth, public ministry. That's for Jesus. That's the first, the moment Samson began his destiny and back on his. He didn't do forty day fasting and praying. He didn't. He went down. He was going down to Timna. From Sora,、uh, that's the verse twenty-five of chapter thirteen. From the、um, camp, the military camp of Dan, he went down to going down to Timna. That at the beginning of his ministry, he was going down. Right at the start, he really let God down. He let his parents down. He let the reader this let down. He disappointed all Israelites. He kept going down. The title for today is Samson who. Walk towards uncleanness. Samson, who broke the Nazarite covenant, the vow of Nazarite, should we say? Samson, who broke the vow of Nazarites. In his in his own selfish desire, he kept going down. So that's the title I'm trying to give to this chapter. In his self centeredness, he kept going down. So he was going down to Timna and saw the woman in Tim on、uh, in Timna of the daughters of the Philistines. Verse one. This chapter. 
uh, is divided into three paragraphs. Verse 1 to 4 is the first paragraph. Verse 5 to 18, the second paragraph. And then uh, 19 and 20 will be the third paragraph. Verse 1 to 4, go down to Timna. He went down and then saw a Philistine woman. He saw the woman, then he went up. He went up to his house, Sora, and told his father and mother, you can see that's the beginning of this rhythm. Go up, go down, go up, go down. So this is the uh, place of Dan, Sora, uh, between Sora and Estol. Estol. So it's Mahana Dan. That's the military camp of Dan. Uh, verse 25 of chapter 13. The spirit of the Lord began to move upon him at Manhana, down between Sora and Astol. Astol. As a Nazarite, what should you do when you when you begin your ministry? Fast, uh, fast, and pray for forty days. Seek the will of God, and then this, uh, see what God wants to 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 do. Seek God. God say, organize an army. Uh, here is Manhana Dan. Camp of Dan. A lot of fighting men here, ready, all available. What should we do? Just like Joshua. Or consecrate the Israelites as in the book of Joshua. Return to Gilgal. Seek God. Then Dan will be able to possess their land. The Philistines will, be, will have been driven out. But no, Samson did not do that. As soon as he began his ministry, he went down to Timna. He went down to Timna and he saw a woman, a Philistine woman. Then he went out back home. So Timna was a city controlled by Philistine, under the rule by Philistine. This is, there was a city here, Timna. So ruled by Philistine king. But then Manhana Dan was a village, was a camp site. People pitch, tam, pitch up a tent, not a proper city. You, you can you see the contrast here, the difference. The, the camp was belonged to God, the, uh, the place of the Israelites. They should expand this uh, place, Mahana Dan. Led an army and then fight. But Samson himself went down to Timna, went down to the land of the city of Philistine. Completely different uh, situation, environment. But he was a Nazarite. Long hair, Israelite clothes. It's like a village boy. The Philistine, they are they were immigrants from. They moved to the land of Canaan from the uh, coastline. They were immigrants. They were of all different kind of cultures. They had their own kings. They had their own things to do, and they were powerful and strong at the time, even oppressing and ruling over the Israelites. That's what happened at the time. But this Nazarite left his own place and came to this uh, Philistine place. They may see like a casino or karaoke. <laughs> and everyone got a mobile phone at the time. <laughs> What should he do? But he was a Nazarite. <coughs> he should have taken the, the way of God. 
they he should have stood on a high place and blew blown the trumpets, wait for God to do to move His way. But he didn't do that. When he went up, went down to Timna, he saw a woman. Then he went up. Uh, he wanted to marry this woman, and his parents we we reject that idea. Disapproved, but he said, "No, I want it." This Nazarite did not listen to the parents, to his parents. Verse four. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord. This is a.、Uh, we had some questions over this verse. So Samson insists that he should marry a Philistine woman. He insists. But his parents say, "No, don't do that. Do not do that." But then, verse four, we are a bit a bit confused. His parents did not know that it was of the Lord that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. How do we interpret and understand this verse? His parents, the father and mother, or I should say it, Samson. Basically, Samson and his parents did not know that it was of the Lord. His parents object to it. It didn't mean that God moved Samson or God really agreed to Samson marrying a Gentile woman. No, but Samson himself insisted doing it, marrying this Philistine woman. So basically, right here, his parents reject, object to it. What did that mean to his parents? What What did Samson marrying a, a, a Philistine woman mean? Samson, Samson, you are breaking the vow of a Nazarite. His parents say, "No, you could not. You can marry the woman, but you marry woman of our brethren. Do not marry a Gentile woman. Do not only, not only Nazarite should not do that, but." All Israelites should not marry a Gentile woman, but Samson did not listen. Did not listen to God. He was self-centered. He saw the woman and he really wanted the woman. That was the greatest weakness of Samson. What did he? Who did he live for? Who, what did he live for? He he lived for his lust. He was greatly impulsive. He saw a woman. He wanted her. That's it. He didn't know that he was bound. He didn't care that he was bound by the vow of Nazarite. He thought that he could. He just do did what he wanted. But what did God do? God allowed him, let him basically not allow, but just let him do. But to certain extent, God still used him. That's what.、Uh, Verse four meant. Now the second paragraph, verse five to eighteen. So he gave a riddle. It's about the honey and also a lion. I'm not going to、um, try to interpret verse by verse, from verse five to a、uh, seven. Verse five to seven. Now he went down to Timna again, and he met with、um, he was met with a lion. How come he didn't? He was not met with Philistine going down to Timna. He was proposing a marriage, but he was met with a lion. <laughs> he was met with a lion. What did that mean? He was met with a lion. That's to his surprise. He was not met with the Philistines' army and how、uh, Samson, you know, overpowered them, defeated. He was not like other judges. He was met with a lion. But then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he killed the. He tore the lion apart as one. Verse seven. Then he went down again. 
and talk with the woman, and she pleased the Samson well. Now this is important. Verse seven. Verse seven. So she pleased that he Samson. That means Samson made a decision there. So he went down to Timnah, saw the Philistine woman, and he decided, "I want to break the vow of Nazarite." That was his decision. He made in verse seven. Uh, that's what verse seven. So he went down to went downhill, and he went towards uncleanness. And also, from verse seven, he saw the carcass of the lion, and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. Verse eight. So he took some of it in his hand and went along eating. He didn't marry the、uh, Philistine woman yet. He did not break the Nazarite vow yet, but he already break not about marriage. He already break the vow. He kill a lion. There was a, a swarm of bees in the carcass of the lion, and he stretch. He took some. It in his hand and went along in eating. He、uh, touched that body. He was defiled. Not only does Nazarite do not do such thing, all Israelites should not touch that body and defile themselves. That's in the book of Leviticus. He was unclean, and he even got this unclean food and then share with his parents. So his parents was un were unclean too. Here, if a person keeps going down, you are unclean. He is self-centered. He was in pride. He was in his emotion. He has broken all vows of Nazarite, and. He has break broken all the rules in the law, not to touch that body, not to be defiled. Now, verse ten. So his father went down to the woman, and then you know gave a feast. So it was a wedding, wedding banquet. So you can imagine he was drinking, and then he gave posed a riddle to the. Uh, to the guest of the wedding banquet, so、uh, explain to him within the seven days. So there was like um, yeah, the bed was thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothing. That's the bed they put. They couldn't、um, guess it within three days. Uh, they couldn't solve the riddle. Of course, they couldn't solve it. Verse fourteen. So he said to them, "Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet." They couldn't solve the riddle. So the companion spoke to spoke to the Samson's wife during the wedding feast. If you do not tell me, then I will burn your your you and your father's house with fire. So this a Philistine woman like pressed Samson. She kept crying, and Samson couldn't do anything. So she, he couldn't copy. So he told him he he told her the the riddle. So the man of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, "What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion?" What is sweeter, sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? So they solved 
but it's in a question mark. It's a question mark. Many scholars discuss uh, much on this uh, verse, verse 18. To me, why, why do they answer with uh, questions? The answer is simple. Basically, they were telling Samson, I know the, the, the riddle, the solution of the riddle. What is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? So what is the, so, uh, the solution of the riddle? What is sweeter than honey? Love. Love is sweeter than honey. What is stronger than lion? Love. Samson, oh, <laughs> Samson, yeah. So Samson killed the lion, and in the carcass of the lion, he took the honey, and he ate it. But what is sweeter than the honey eaten, edible honey? Samson, that's your love for the Philistine woman. Sweeter than honey. Why? This woman, this Philistine woman, pressed you to tell you tell her this the riddle. You cannot you did not overcome the woman because you love her more. Your love for her is stronger than your might. Samson, Samson. They were teasing, mocking, mocking Samson. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than lion? That's you, Samson. But Samson, Samson, you are weak. You are bound by a woman. You do not overpower this woman. The woman, the love you have for this woman, you do not overcome it. So Samson answered, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. So let's, uh, I, I will finish uh, the third paragraph first. Verse 10, 19 and 20, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down. <laughs> he didn't buy the, uh, you know, get the changes, as he would say, the clothing. He killed 30 of their men. The hearts of God. Uh, to a certain extent, that was the heart of God. So Samson was like a crazy cow. He was so angry, he lost the bet. So he went down and then he just killed 30 people at random and then took their apparel and gave the changes of clothing to those who had explained the riddle. That was the way of uh, Samson. And here he also lost his wife. He was so angry. He was furious. His anger was aroused and went back up to his father's house. So uh, Samson's wife was given to his companion. But Samson was unaware of his wife being given to his companion. But that's the, uh, what uh, happened in uh, chapter 15. He didn't know what happened to his wife. He was like a wild cow. So God could only use him to a very limited way because, yes, to a certain extent, the will of God was accomplished, but only to a certain extent. Well, we go back to the riddle. You could interpret the riddle. That's also a reminder to us as well. Yes, we can be powerful. If we go down, 
Our weaknesses will overpower our strength. However much your gift God has given you, yes, to a certain extent you will accomplish something. But our weaknesses, our self-centeredness, we do what we see fit. We are being stirred by our emotions. Our weaknesses will overpower our strength. And that will limit how we can use by God. To Samson, we must be very careful of our character. We need to keep covenant. We need to keep the vow of Nazarite. We need to be sanctified. Do not be self-centered. Samson was self-centered. He didn't think for God nor the Israelites. He only he only attend to his own uh, selfish desire. How? What does it? What did it say to the people of the when the northern kingdom was divided from the northern uh, southern kingdom, Jeroboam and uh, Rehoboam? They must see how do we make decision. God has given ten tribes to Jeroboam, and then only one tribe left to uh, Rehoboam. But what about the outcomes of Samson? That Jeroboam was like judges, <coughs> but when he go and he continued this way, he will keep go going down. He is very limited. Even though he was used by God, chosen by God, Samson was like nurtured uh, by God this way. To the Levites and priests and uh, to the two uh, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, what should they do? Levites and priests, what do you choose? In the whole book of Judges, where were Levi and judges, uh, uh, Levites and priests? If Levi and priest had risen up, the whole Israel would have taken different path. The priest should have uh, let pe people come to know God. Brother and sisters, when it applies to your life, do you? Are you self centered? Just like Samson? If even if that's the case, you have a lot of gifts, you have a lot of wealth, you you are going down. Do not be self-centered. Then we think, what God wants me to think? What does God want me to do? That's how we follow God. Especially if you're a pastor, a preacher, you're a cell leader, we need to uphold our identity as a Nazarite. Be sanctified. We be salt and light to the generation. In the time of judges, all the priests were unemployed. They did not serve God. But today, in our generation, uh, back to the time of Jeroboam and Rehoboam, uh, leave uh, the book of judges were tell. We're telling the Levites and uh, priests not to worship the golden calf. We turn to Jerusalem and worship God. The heart of God will be accomplished. Even though now Rehoboam only got two tribes left, even though Rehoboam was such a wicked king, we follow God. We do not follow people, do not follow leaders. Today, you are not following the world. You do not keep going down to Timnah. You do not keep being self-centered. You do not being bound by lust. We look to God. We go up. God will use everyone who is willing to be used by Him and keep going up. God wants to use you. Amen. May God bless us. That's the end of the message today.